Access Sacramento presents Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda. See Schaefer going upstairs again and wide open in that end zone. Down the sideline. Touchdown, Cougars. We have reached the halfway mark for the regular season in high school football throughout the Sac Joaquin section. And Access Sacramento tonight is in Natomas to cover a key Tri-County Conference battle. Good evening and welcome to David Tooker Stadium on the campus of Indercombe High School. We've got a doozy for you tonight with first place at stake, the host, Indercombe Tigers, taking on the visiting River City Raiders. Hello again, I'm Will James, along with the Imperator of Analysis, Jim Domino. And tonight, it is homecoming night here at Intercom, Coach Domino, but the heavier drama will be performed out on the field tonight. Well, it certainly will. Good evening, football fans. We've got a great night, little to no wind. Thank goodness we're not on that East Coast, Will. We're getting wind plus rain. We're looking forward to a great game. We got a great homecoming crowd here. You couldn't ask for a better matchup. Both these teams are in the running for that Tri-County Conference Championship, and we expect a lot of thrills along the way to a great game, Will. Well, first place, sole possession of first place is at stake. As I mentioned, both clubs come in 2-0 and in the TCC. And if we look at the last meeting between the two teams, it's apparent that River City will try to do something this evening they have yet to accomplish. Well, certainly River City uh, has been in, in the past taking a beating from Intercom. As you see last year's score, 54-0. They would love to avenge that. This is a much better River City ball club, Will. And even though both clubs have been hampered by injuries, we expect a much closer ball game tonight. Now, both squads do come into tonight's contest with <laughs> momentum. If we go ahead and splash the last outings for these two squads, both emerged victorious, but with slightly different measure of well, winning margin. River City handled Pioneer relatively easy, and the Raider defense shut them down. Little and Green had big nights as they, took, they beat Pioneer 33-8. Meanwhile, Intercom had to go up to Yuba City, had a tough ball game up there, beating the Honkers 43-33 and uh, had to come from behind. It was anybody's ball game with a uh, few minutes to go in a ball game and Coach Stark said that was one of the toughest games this year. Well, it was tied at the half and then a big third quarter put Intercom ahead in that game and they were able to hold on. Now we're gonna show you some of the impact players connected to tonight's matchup. And first of all, for Chris Baker's River City Raiders, they're gonna to have to come on strong with the Rockin' Raiders. Well, let's start out with Ricky Liddell. He gets the start tonight at that halfback spot when Perea, their number one running back, has been injured. And there we have Angelo Bruce, outstanding wide receiver and defensive player. One of the top linebackers in the league, Jason Maluzak, starting at that outside backer and highlighting that good secondary of River City is Isaiah Flagg, We'll see a little action perhaps at wide receiver, but he's a, he's a great defensive back. Well, Intercom head coach Terry Stark will counter with the Tigers traction. 
Well, let's start with the quarterback, the three-year veteran, Trajan Cotton. He can do it all, but this year he injured his thumb early, and that's limited his throwing. But you'll see him in the secondary, rarely gets off the field. Levi Lefiele, uh, the running back linebacker, is one of the best athletes on the team, only a junior. And, of course, Aramis Sua, the big lineman, anchoring that front at nose guard. And, of course, the three-year veteran who's being recruited by a number of big-time colleges, starting his third-year tight end, Josh Follow. Well, that's the way we have the table set for you this evening in Natomas, where in a tri-county conference battle, host Intercom on homecoming night, taking on the visiting River City Raiders. Don't wander off too far. When we return, we're going to check in with Rick Stewart, and he will bring additional details to bear on tonight's hot matchup. Stay with us. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort... Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son! It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Outstanding rendition of our Star Spangled Banner performed this evening by the Intercom High School Marching Band under the directorship of Sean Hines. Welcome aboard to Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week with Jim Domino and Rick Stewart. I'm Will James, and we've got an intriguing matchup for you tonight, a game that will determine, at least for a week, who has sole possession of the Tri-County Conference as 2-0 River City comes in to face 2-0 Intercom. A tale of contrasting stories here. 
from the opposite camps, but nevertheless, an interesting ball game, particularly on the River City side of things where Chris Baker has come back aboard to guide the Raiders. Yeah, Chris has come back for his third stint, I believe, and, and anchored with Steve DiPrato, the veteran coach, also coming out of retirement, who's caught, coached at a college level and several high schools. So that, that's a big factor. They, they've got two great leaders, and River City has made, has made quite a turnaround. They're four and two. Uh, they've had to number of injuries, but they're still right in the thick of things in this league, Will. Well, as always, there's a set of keys and crucial points throughout each game. Let's take a look at the Imperators, key matchups, and intangible factors. Well, as you see the captains, let's start out with veteran quarterback Cotton, three-year starter. Uh, he can do many, many things, hampered by a thumb injury on his throwing hand, but still very tough versus inexperienced young junior Aguilar filling in for the injured Jimenez. Tiger wing T with deception versus a very aggressive Raider D. And Raiders run ball control. Talking with the coaches, they've got to use that clock on their running game and hopefully keep that very dangerous, speedy Tiger offense off the field. Certainly a major concern, both coaches. Uh, hoping that their clubs can clean up some loose ends that they've seen throughout the first uh, six weeks of the season, and that'll be played out tonight in tonight's hometown sports game of the week. Let's go to Rick Stewart. All right, thanks, guys. Our two coaches tonight, it's a st study in contrast. It's strange that you see Chris Baker here for River City, third time around with River City, 42 years coaching. 42 years. Two of them were Washington High before Washington merged with another school and became River City in West Sacramento. Coaching experience, a wealth of coaching experience. Good guy, old school, looking for some opportunities tonight. His career record this time around is four and two. He didn't know what his career record was overall, didn't push him for it. 42 years coaching, he's a West Sacramento native, involved in the community, a community-minded person. For Intercom, Terry Stark, it's his 12th year, 111 and 25. That's his career record, 10 seasons, 10 or more victories, 48 and one in Tri-County Conference victory records since 2007. He was also former head coach at Natomas as well as Miro Loma High School. Now let's talk about this series history between these two teams. River City and Intercom. This is the Raiders' third season in the Tri-County Conference. It's their fourth meeting since 2006. Intercom leads the series 4-0, and that's the sore spot. The Tigers have outscored the Raiders 210-23. to 23. You can see it there. The margin of victory is large. This is a game that River City wants badly. Do they have enough horses on the field to compete with Intercom tonight? Let's see. Guys, it should be a good night for football. It should be a good football game. Well, we've had the coin toss, and kicking off from our right to our left. Just about ready to get things underway. Excellent crowd on hand with ideal climate conditions. River City to be kicking off. The Raiders booting from right to left. Twin returners for the Intercom Tigers stationed at the five. A short kickoff gathered inside the 20 yard line. And a field reversal and a good decision there. And an excellent run back resulting in good field position upcoming for River City. And let's go ahead and set that Raiders offense. What do you see, Jim? Yeah, well, the Tigers brought the ball back to about the 40-yard line, and they're in good position here with a short field to drive. Not quite the 40, about the 35. So Intercom will show you their offense. Let's see the Intercom offense. They've got the football first. Dressed in their home navy blue, trimmed in gold. Football parked. 
at the 35 yard line. Near side running is bottled up and contained as Cotton keeps the football. Knocked down near the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up second down. Okay, veteran QB, Trajan Cotton calling the signals. Tupo, the fullback, the rest of the backfield, Robinson, Lafayette, Bible, and follow. The interior line, King, Wesley Daniel, Anthony Brown at center, Roberts, and Knott comprise that front line. Second and 10 after no gain, the left-handed pass out to the left sideline, it's complete. And doing a nice job after contact. Follow with the grab and the extra yardage. And it's gonna be a first down right off the bat for the Tigers. Well, Josh Follow, a three-year veteran. Vasquez, Moffey, Roman, and Munoz, the down four, and four backers, McCluzak, Gokum, Salmos, and Nelson, and then the three deep secondary, Creer and Cole, excellent corner men, and Isaiah Flagg at the safety position. That front four, Moffey, Roman, Vasquez, and Munoz doing a good job for the Raiders. Tough challenge here tonight. Well, whistle stop play. With that opportunity, let's go ahead and show you the game officials assigned to monitor this contest from the NCOA. Yeah. And uh, we'll fit that in here as the Tigers line up for first down. And here we go. And there's our game official, Dan Bucky. Off right tackle, quick opener, and nearly a 10 yard run. Getting the carry, Levi Lafaele. And he's run for nine, make it second and one. From the NCOA, Dan Bucky wearing the white cap as our game referee, the umpire, David Ballou. Jason Hott is the head linesman. Our line judge this evening, Dan Doris, and Russell Carter, the back judge. So second and one, the football, we'll call it the River City 41. Cotton keeps, gets chased, eludes the rush, running for his life and throws it incomplete to avoid a sack. He was very fortunate there. He running for his life, broke, broke the pocket. Good thing he's left-handed or they would have got him for, for grounding the football, Will, uh, under heavy rush. Let's keep our eyes on this very aggressive River City defense. They're gonna take some chances tonight. They're gonna roll the dice here and there and try to keep the intercom offense guessing, so to speak. But a nice pass rush there on second and one. We're just underway in case you've just tuned in. Nice to have you along for the ride tonight on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. We're in Natomas where host intercom on homecoming night taking on the visiting River City Raiders. We have a timeout on the field and it comes early in the contest. Very definitely. Coach Stark uh, had a third and one situation, a very big down, and he didn't like the look of that Raider D uh, really uh, and didn't want to risk the play he had called. It was too late to audible. He wisely called a timeout. Well, let's take a look at some of the intangible factors that are likely to pop up during the course of tonight's game. It seems as though they always do. Well, yes, intangible factors, you never know. Turnovers and penalties will play a big factor here tonight. Uh, hopefully no penalties and they let the kids play the ball game. Kicking game and special teams, very definitely. Tri-County Conference parity, believe me. Uh, for first time in a while, River City has a shot for that conference title and, and they wanna make, you know, make something of it. Uh, believe me, Intercom's been used to dominating for many, many years. So they come to the line with a third and one in a tight formation. Defense is jumping around and hit right at the line of scrimmage and driven back. And the Raiders think they've had a stop here. We'll see what kind of a spot they get. Well, it's very close. And if they take his foot marker, he looks like he's six to inches to a foot short. But with that in mind, they're gonna bring it, they're gonna bring it in. I believe they have to bring it in. No? So Cotton, 
and four others return to the field after a brief sideline chat. There you see veteran head coach Terry Stark up along that Tiger sideline. I thought he requested a, 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 a measurement, but they said, no, we're not going to measure. Okay, roll the dice. First quarter, fourth and one. And a sneak is going to get plenty. An extra five, so to speak, as Cotton keeps and has the clutch first down. First and 10 Tigers. Football at the River City 35. Well, you know, you know that Coach Stark was going to go for it. There's no question. It was six inches to a, a foot off. Early in the ball game, it's still decent field position. You know, he was inside the 40. Why not go for it? Well, his mindset exactly. They do cash it in as darkness now is virtually complete here in Natomas, blanketing Tooker Stadium here at Indercom High, and whistles are going to halt this play. Minus five on the Tigers. We'll wait for the call from Bucky. If that was a delay, no mechanics. If, in fact, it was a delay, that had to be one of the quickest 25 counts. That may have set a world record. My goodness. First and 15 as the football is backed up to the River City 40. Turn and fake. Throw on the run, incomplete off the fingertips of Fallow, who was open in that intermediate hook range just outside the 20. Wide open. Wide open. No, actually, Trajan Cotton looked good rolling out, rolling out to the right side, you know, being a left-handed quarterback. As you see Stark's situation subbing, what we call situation subbing going in, three or four guys going in and out. There you see Coach DeBrado on the other side trying to figure things out for the Raiders. Still third and 15, motion in that backfield. The Belly Series is a fake. Right side running, big daylight, 20, 10, pay dirt. Robinson scores from the 40 yard line. A quick burst and tremendous ball deception in that formation. Well, they ran crossing action. They ran that counter back, faking to the fullback. Credit Trajan Cotton for faking out not only the defense, but most of the people in the ballpark didn't know that Robinson had the football till they saw him go downfield, Will. Great deception. There it is again, as you saw him walking the sideline and getting some congrats from his teammates. So they go for the PAT, Renato Monroy, to do the booting. Spotted clean, big rush. Chip shot is money. At 8.14, early first, the Tigers strike quickly and score from 40. We'll be right back. Got a quarter. Welcome back. Early shock treatment applied by the Speedy Tigers. 65 yards, eight plays in less than four minutes. Robinson with a 40 yard burst to finish it. Seven nothing Tigers as they prepare to kick off. Short and out of bounds as the flag flies. Well, we see what the Raiders can do for the ball. With the football, first time on offense. Decent field position off that uh, out-of-bounds kickoff. And Coach Stark said that since he can't get the ball consistently in the end zone, that he was going to pooch or field position type kick. And you can see that right away. 
Okay, referee Bucky sets the play. First and 10 from the River City 35 yard line. Left side running is stuffed and shoved back. Nothing doing. Tilson nowhere to go. Where they came off the blocks at defense. Sua, Topu, Horta, and Follow come off that their blocks very quickly. Gain of one, second and nine from the Raiders 36. They keep it on the ground. That's their fort. And hard running, short gain, but a lot of heart on that play and a massive gang tackling effort to neutralize that run play. Tilson with the carry again. Well, if you notice the speed, watch this replay here. Tilson bangs in a good effort. And really a ton of effort trying to get a yard or two and very tough quick opener good hole breaking through nearly to midfield first down raiders but we'll wait and see if that's going to be actually a fumble recovery cotton swiped it but i don't believe they're going to give it to him no angelo bruce with a counter back off that he comes around from that wide receiver position watch his hand to hand inside handoff great effort by bruce here picking up the first down So the football parked at the River City 47. Sustaining their drive. Trailing seven, nothing. Quick flip, overthrown. Aguilar rushed the pass. Yeah, it looked wide open there. Nelson, the intended receiver. So make it second and 10. Okay. Let me amend that. Correction on the call, it was Rivers, the intended receiver. He wears 80. Second and 10. Aguilar to throw, sets up a screen. Well diagnosed. Well, but I'll tell you, give credit to that ball carrier for eluding it. 18, it looked like a recovery by 62. Let's take another look at that play and see how it unfolds. All right, she throws a screen pass out here to 18. Well, and Liddell is subbing for the injured Perea. And he did fumble the ball, but 62 recovered for River City. A great recovery for them to save it. Up to the line, turn and give. Nothing doing. Back to the line of scrimmage and not much else. Liddell with the carrier and uh, got pounded pretty good. Well, they go to fourth down now. Credit Gerardo Rodriguez with saving a turnover on the part of the Raiders, recovering the fumble by number 18, of course, um, John Ricky Liddell. Ricky Liddell fumbled it. So fourth and eight. Punt formation. Nice driving punt. Bobbled inside the 10-yard line. Loose football and outstanding downfield coverage by the Raiders that really had that play bracketed 41 yards on the punt and well Tim Gay number 20 had a problem there putting a the handle on it will and then it was great coverage downfield a good break for the Raiders a nice kick and no return So the Tigers set up shop with the first and 10 from their five. A rapidly moving first quarter, 5.39 to go. Most, mostly the plays have been run plays. And if there ever is gonna be a position for this defense to come up big, this is it. Nice slashing move out to about the 13 yard line. Robinson, another good carry. Well, once again, Coach Stark has a host of backs. Even when he has injured backs, he still has Robinson, Topu, Lefayelle, and Davion Ross. And there you see the quick Tigers getting upfield in a hurry. 
Raiders have not faced this kind of speed this year, believe me. It's a gain of nine to the 14 yard line, second and one. Right side running again, a good key block, first down and working with the pill there, Levi Lafaili, first down Tigers. Levi is going to play multiple positions tonight. You'll see him at fullback, you'll see him at halfback, you'll see him at the flanker position. As you see Terry coming in with fresh legs, three or four uh, players relative to the play he's gonna call. And he seems to be working on the near sideline to the bench side here. Much easier for him to call plays to his quarterback. They work the far side this time. With the carry that time, Lawrence Evans. He's mixing it up. Gain of eight, second and two upcoming. Evans plus eight. Once again, you see Evans take the hand off and run a fly sweep, what they call a fly sweep. He's gonna have fresh legs in there. Uh, as mentioned, Coach Stark's gonna use three, four, five running backs, and they're, they're gonna have fresh legs. And uh, when you have that kind of depth, it makes it a little easier. Clock rolling at the 415 mark. The first period slipping away here from Indercombe High School in Natomas. Up the gut, well defended. Good line surge is gonna result in a first down, but grudgingly. That's great second effort after the contact. Looked like number eight with great second effort in there. Tupo. Tupo, the fullback. Good job in there by Tupo, who also starts on D. And Terry, who likes the platoon, Terry Stark, the coach, this year has been forced to use four, five, six guys on O and D. Well, both clubs, as you mentioned in the pregame, Jim, have been hit hard with injuries. And for many of the weeks thus far, they've had patchwork type lineups. Cotton keeps, throws on the run, double coverage. Nearly broken up, but a circus catch by Fallow for a big gain inside the River City 20. Well, now we know why he's a big time recruit. Josh Fallow, tight end that can run the deep routes as well. Watch him get up. Watch him get upstairs. Three year starter, Josh Fallow. His brother starts for the University of Colorado. 46 yards on the aerial connection from Cotton to Fallow. The reception much better than the throw, but it works big. That play strung out laterally. Good outside containment that time. Outside on Lafaeli, and it's going to be a gain of three. Good job by the River City D. As you mentioned, Will, they did contain that well. Good pursuit. Vasquez, Molasek, Salmos, and company. Good job. So the football at the 15 yard line. Three carries for 21 yards. Lafa Ale, the junior heavy back, also an imposing pass rusher on the defensive side. Once again, good job by the D. Uh, Terry likes to, Coach Stark likes to run inside with that fullback and setting up that counter or that uh, off tackle George play. Tupo with the last carry gets a, gets a long one. It's still gonna bring up third and six. Now watch for the deception inside. They've gone inside twice. Watch them freeze with a possible counter the opposite way. Right side running, lead blockers to the 10, cut inside the five. Touchdown Tigers on a well-designed play and beautifully executed as you saw Davion Ross follow his blockers beautifully. They're in a position where they can switch their running backs, left half, right half, wing backs, etc and set up the fly series or set up those counters, Will. Once again, I said it before, the speed element is big here. 
Renato Monroy on for the PAT. He's one out of one so far. Big rush, but he gets it away, and it's a bullseye. Let's have a look at this inside fake handoff fly series, and here comes Ross. Nice cut back and into the end zone. We'll be right back. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. The Tigers set to kick off after going 95 yards in eight plays, 341 consumed on the drive, and it's a 14-0 Intercom lead here, less than two minutes remaining in the first quarter. The kickoff trickles along the sideline, and it's gonna be downed near the 25, and evidently that's where the Raiders will open shop, and this is the point in the contest where they really need to make something happen on offense. They certainly do. They're down 14-0, 156 remaining in the first quarter. And quite frankly, that first quarter has been dominated by Intercom in their speed, uh, really converting a 65-yard drive and then a 95-yard drive uh, using the clock, mixing up their plays. Right side running. Nice cutback, but minimal gain on the play. And again, getting a good workout, Ricky Liddell. Gain of four, second and six. Good sportsmanship by that Tiger defense helping him up. As you see, the holes are there, but the Tiger D is very quick getting to the football. Single wide receivers to each side. Straight ahead handoff. Nice second after after bouncing off. And Riley Tilson, he'll get a workout tonight based on his hard nose play and the injury sustained to other members of the running game. And that's gonna bring up third and three. from the River City 31. Big play for the Raiders here. And I don't believe that's gonna get it done. Nice line play to bottle that up. Punt team coming on the field again for the Raiders and uh, it's three and out, three and out. It's not very good as we're kind of coming to an end of that first quarter. No gain on the play, fourth and three. Punt formation shown by DJ Castro and the Raiders. He booms a high liner, fielded inside the 30, and speed on the run back. Forty-two yards on the punt. Good field position upcoming for the Tigers. Well, three and out. And having the football, you know, their goal was to keep the ball away from the Tiger offense. However, when you go three and out and only have the football for one minute and 13 seconds, it gives the ball right back to the Tigers. And it's going to put a tremendous burden on their defense if that uh, remains the same throughout the contest. Right now, they're still pretty fresh here late in the first quarter, just 32 seconds on the clock. And it's going to be apparently a penalty charged against the Tigers, the walk-off all the way back to about the 32 yard line. No indication yet from our game referee Dan Bucky on the nature of the penalty. So we'll just call it a penalty. 
Well, <clears throat> big hole right side, break outside, speed to burn, don't know if they can catch him. Robinson to the 10, to the five, caught from behind. A tremendous pursuit, Isaiah Flag. Touch down, Tigers. Well, 68 yards to the house, and Robinson's in for a pair of long TD runs to spark this intercom first quarter surge. So the visiting River City Raiders really being administered early game shock treatment here. They've been stung for three TDs, two long ones, and a 95-yard drive cashed in. Whistles are going to blow this dead. Well, maybe. Let's well, forgive uh, me. Mike, for, that's my bad call, Will. Yeah. That's I thought all right. he was in. I thought I saw one ref even put up his hands. Okay, it was a first and goal from the three. So... Make it second down now. Correction on my part. Here's the oh. long run from Robinson. Watch Robinson stretch it out there. And watch flag number seven with Catch the heat. Him. And that's what I thought I saw. We've played one here at Indrakum High School and on homecoming night, the host Tigers rolling. We'll be right back. What are you, superheroes? Just four brothers who hate bullies and love this city. Okay, they change ends of the field. We open second quarter action here at Indrakum High School. And the host Tigers already up 14-0 are deep in the red zone. If you look at total offense, I guess it could be said it's one-sided. Indrakum 17 plays for 230 yards. River City 21 yards in nine plays. Right now the football parked. And it looks like at the River City eight yard line. First and goal. Well, Terry, uh, Coach Terry Stark has mixed it up both on touchdowns down the goal line with, with um, mismatch reverse action. Tough interior defense there by River City to shut that down. Robinson, you're really getting a workout here in the early going, playing tough minutes with still uh, a not fully recovered shoulder injury, but uh, one of the top backs around. Well, he certainly is. Third down, good job by the Raider D down there. Uh, ball resting looks like about all in the one. And should uh, coach not take a chance and have Cotton go in behind his, behind Brown Roberts and Wesley Daniel. Second and goal from the six, motion again. Cotton keeps, throws for the end zone, and it looks like Follow has not been able to hold on to the football. Jarred loose, apparently, deep in the secondary, and will credit flag again for another top play. Incomplete, third and goal. Isaiah Flag, number seven, having a great night. We talked about him in the pregame. Let's look at this as you see Cotton rolling out you see follow going up, and then it's stripped away from him. Cotton through the air, 
two out of five for 61 yards with a long of 46 on that excellent acrobatic catch by Fallow in the first quarter. So third and goal. Here they come. Near side running. Boom. Collision outside the goal line and being dropped short. So again, Evans gets the carry, but he can't quite get in. Here comes Evans on that fly series. Coming around, can't get a good job by number 21 for River City State at home, Keith Cole. Keith Cole with a nice play tonight, coming yeah. up from that corner position. Well, Coach Baker feels that the Raiders secondary is perhaps the strongest element in that River City defense, and certainly Cole, a big part of that, one of their best cover guys. Well, we like him, and of course we like Flag. To the end zone, touch, down, Tigers. Robinson carries for the TD, and we'll bounce it down to Rick Stewart. All right, guys. Sean Hines, our band director here at Indy Intercom. Sean, you got a great sounding band tonight. Thank you so much. We worked so well, really, really, really hard. I'm really proud of our kids. We've come from uh, just a lot of humble beginnings. We started off with 13 kids in our program, and and now we're up to 187, as you can see behind us. So uh, we're just uh, being a powerhouse as much as we can. Do you perform in, in concert competitions? We have uh, competitions in the fall uh, for our marching band, which you see behind us. Um, our first competition is, believe it or not, this Saturday at Franklin High School of Elk Grove. Wow, so coming up, you know, glory and everything. You guys sound really good tonight. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate you guys. Sean, thanks for being with us and spending some time with us. Thank you so much. All right, guys, back up to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Stewart. There was a penalty dropped on the play, evidently declined by the Tigers. The PAT makes it 21-0, and head coach Chris Baker and the River City Raiders have basically been given an unofficial ultimatum. Now's the time to start playing some clutch ball. But let's get well, a clarification here from, there's some indecisiveness out on the field here. But the scoring drive consumes six plays, covering 68 yards, two minutes, 21 seconds. So three scoring drives, very impressive by the Tigers. Well, let's take another well, look at the touchdown from close range. All right, there you see a give, and Robinson make it look easy, uh, really. Everybody was blocked. He kind of waltzed in the end zone. Right now, the officials have gone over, tried to explain things to Terry, where Coach Stark, where he'd be kicking off from, okay? Uh, there was a penalty down there, and now you see the ball reset on the 40. And I think what the coaches want, and it'd be nice to see up here where we can explain to our viewers uh, with uh, some mechanics that's what we haven't seen tonight. And I think that's what Coach Stark wants to see. What was the penalty? So the Monroy kickoff to the 15 yard line or so. And Liddell on the return cannot find any daylight and comes out to about the 28 yard line. And that's where the Raiders will take over, trailing it now 21-0. Well, the Raiders haven't done much. The last series, they had the ball for one minute and 13 seconds. And uh, I know they came in here thinking about ball control, keeping a, the ball away from that dangerous, speedy offense that the Tigers have. And quite frankly, they're, they're blocking, but the Tigers are coming off their blocks. They're very quick. They're not sustaining their blocks. They're not used to this kind of speed on D. Well, you mentioned that at the outset, the speed factor so far, it's shown up big. Tight formation, nothing doing. Exchange problems with Aguilar and center Lira. So. Okay, they lose two on the play. There might've been a loose football in there, but River City is still with the pill, second and 11. Nice surge, but short yardage, grudging yards given up by that Tiger defense. 
and Nelson that time with the carry. Big Sua coming back in. Aramis Sua coming back in that nose guard. He takes up a couple of spots. Well, they called it. The 12th man didn't get off the field, Will. Flags fly on the third down carry, and we'll let our men esteemed on referee, Dan Bucky, give us the explanation. Five yards, third down. Well, that was very comprehensive. Well, it was. Uh, they couldn't get their 12th man off the field, and uh, that was it. So they get a five-yard penalty. For First Dillett. down, River City. At the Raider 39, a little bit of breathing room. Hit in the backfield and shoved backward. Terrific defense. Nelson blasted that time by two Tigers. Well, I tell you, great job out there with that outside. Tupu came in there from that outside tackle position so quickly, along with Ross helping him. Yes, that speedy D. Up the gut and unyielding is that Tiger center. The center of that defense just exceedingly difficult. Well, <laughs> Sua. You're just not going to move him, uh, really, all 300-plus pounds of him. Tupo with another tackle, and you can see Nelson there having his helmet removed on the play. Well, the thing is with Sua, number 77, it takes two or three blockers to just watch him. He clogs up the middle. He clogs up two holes. and makes it easy for Tupo to make a play. Second and eight again. Right in the middle of the line, short yardage, and it's going to bring up about a fourth and six. Clock rolling here with the run game dominating the offensive calls by both squads. We're at the eight-minute mark, nearing midway second in a ball game that's been dominated by Intercom from the outset, 21-0 Tigers. From the 43-yard line, Raiders need six. They'll punt directly at the returner who fields it on the dead run. And nice downfield coverage on the play. Tim Gay had nowhere to go. A 39-yard punt, negligible return. Mark Gokum with great downfield coverage for River City. Good and job. Gokum was the player of the game for the Raiders a week ago against Pioneer when he came off the bench and registered 12 tackles in that victory over the Patriots. Hell, no wonder he got player of the game. So first and 10 for the Tigers at the Indy 22 as the remainder of their offense comes onto the field. Seven and a half to go, second quarter. Excellent crowd on hand tonight. Very festive with Indercom celebrating its homecoming. Up the middle. Well, a good line surge. Number 11, it looked like D'Angelo Morgan coming in the game. As mentioned, Coach Stark will use a host of running backs and keep the fresh legs. Uh, hopefully staying healthy now for the balance of the season during his stretch run. So Morgan comes out, re-entering the contest is Tupo, and it's going to bring up a second and five. Near side, good room to work, and he is going to be really something. Uh, Oh, Lapa yeah. Ely has been impressive. Well, he didn't want to single him out as he said he's one of the top three on this football team. A and carry he, to the 47, a run for 22 yards. And watch that replay. This, this young man can play multiple positions, takes the handoff, stiff arms, He's got decent outside speed, doesn't want to go down. Look at him move the legs and fight for yards. Tough customer. First and 10. 
Tigers on the move again. Cotton rolls right, and the lefty's going to fire. And it looks like a sideline hookup across midfield. Nice accuracy on the play. And that time, with the reception coming up with that catch, number 22, Taj Harvey. Well, I'm impressed with him rolling right, being a left-hander. He gets that shoulder, finally turned around. There he is. Hits Harvey there, wide open. Actually had two receivers right there, Will. So I don't know if they're going to measure for this or just call it a first down, and they do. It's a first down for the Tigers. The ball spotted at the River City 43-yard line. So Indercombe looking very impressive here in the first half. They run it again, of course. Not this time, however. Well, Four Raiders there oh, shut that him. down, and Levi had nowhere to go. That's a great job of the Raiders penetrating into the backfield with a host of defenders. Loss of two. Another look at the defensive surge here. 45, great job with 20 coming in there. Nice job. Nelson backed up the initial surge put on there by Andrew Corral. So they parked the football at the River City 45. Loss of two, make it second and 12. Five and a half to go, clock rolling. Cotton wants to throw. Deep down the field, single coverage. Grabbed and knocked away into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Well, he had control going over. He, when he broke the plane, he had made the catch. If we see the replay, he fumbled later. Well, Bible was tremendous on this. His concentration was just terrific. Look at that great camera work. A nice strip by defensive back number 21 with a great strip there for the Raiders defending Keith Cole. Monroy on for the PAT. He's three for three thus far. Good snap, spotted clean, booted under a hard rush. Got it at 528. Second quarter action. The Intercom Tigers are up to their old tricks, and that is scoring touchdowns with speed. We'll be right back. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat right or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? The Tigers go 78 yards in five plays and now kick off. Taken on the dead run, a nice run back almost to the 40 yard line. Ricky Liddell did a good job there. Good return. They put it at the 39 yard line. Ricky Liddell on offense in the first six games averaging better than six yards per carry and they're gonna need quite a bit out of him tonight. Yes, yes they are. And um, it's, it'd be nice if Raiders can get something going here and move the chains. Low snap. Flag with the option pass broken up deep down the field. Excellent coverage that time intended for Angelo Bruce defending on the play in the right spot, Tim Gay. Well, that secondary, you're talking about secondaries, but they got Ross, Cotton, Bible, and Gay in that secondary. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, there are possibly two, maybe three recruitable athletes there. 
Now second and 10 after the incompletion. Short yardage run play toward the far hash mark ends up in what they call a scrum and it turns out to be about a three or four yard gain for Rivy City. Well, quarterback Drew Aguilar has been under tremendous heat thus far. Here's a good picture of the big guy, Sua, anchoring down that middle. Third and six. Huge play upcoming for the Raiders offense. Aguilar to throw, quick shot, left side, broken up, incomplete, well-timed defensive play. Gay again in on the coverage, the ball intended for Imani Green, fourth and six. So the Intercom defense has stymied the, anything the Raiders have tried on offense. And on the other side of the football, they put up four TDs for a 28-0 lead. Here's the punt. Gay lets it roll, and it's going to trickle inside the 10 and be downed by good downfield coverage near the 6. Excellent job getting the down is Keith Cole and poor field position upcoming for Indercom. 51 yards on that excellent unreturnable punt. That's a great punt, and uh, if they like to have that back uh, again, if they could, Will, and receive it and feel that ball on the punt return, Tim Gay would like another shot at that. But you know, it didn't stop them before. They had a 95-yard drive, and here they have the ball on a six-yard line line, and they're very capable of ball control, and with that speed, misdirection, the mix mixing up occasional pass. Um, he's not that capable here tonight, I'll tell you that. Well, the 16th ranked Intercom Tigers on homecoming night here, having a stellar first half. Getting treated rudely that time for the Tigers, D'Angelo Morgan with the carry. Nowhere to go. Nice job by that front of River City, Roman Muffy. Munoz and Vasquez were all over that. No gain, second and 10. Clock rolling at the four minute mark, late second. Okay, there you see four coming in, including three, four skilled players coming in for Coach Stark. As once again, he likes to substitute three, four, and five guys. And the last one to come in was Tupo. Turn and give, right side running. No lead block and a beautiful low tackle shuts that down. That's an outstanding tackle over there. Trying to run wide, nowhere to go. Davion Ross chopped down by an excellent solo tackle and that's by linebacker Jason McClusack. Well, Coach Stark playing it pretty conservative here. Now he's got a third and about nine. And let's see what they will have here looking for a possible rollout play action pass or that Sally counter play. Well, I wonder if that originated in the Sally League. <laughs> Back on the East Coast. Okay. In the Carolinas. The Tigers call a timeout, and this will give us a chance to look at the weekly rankings compiled by our well, Jim Domino. Domino's dozen. They're, they're not hearing the parabolic as good as they Usually can. I think All right, here we go. Del Oro, number one. We've I've had him one from the very start. Folsom two, four and one. Elk Grove, great victory over Grant. Grant four. Rockland's only lost to Grant with a good victory. Rockland playing Oak Ridge tonight. Antelope, Monterey Trail, Sack, Jesuit, Whitney Franklin in the top 12. And the red zone occupied red zone. by. Red zone, we've got Sheldon at 13. Roseville still undefeated. Vista, Intercom right here tonight. In River City, Intercom at 16. The Sooners, Oaks at 17. El Camino on the rise at 18. Christian Brothers into the top 20 for the first time, 19. And River City 
Number 20. Endercom with a key play and a breakout on a flush. And that is so well contained. Well, they're going to be forced to punt for the first time tonight, I think, Will. Well, Cole again with a big play on Ross to shut that down, bringing up fourth and six. So it appears to be a punt. It is high but short, angling over to make the catch and have a one yard return. Well, uh, we've talked about him several times, Ricky Liddell, trying to make something happen here before the half, a good playmaker, but best field position so far to begin a River City drive. 34 yards on the punt. Taj Harvey, nice tackle, outstanding special teams player and a utility man playing multiple positions, particularly at running back and de defensive back for the Tigers. 2.15 to go, late second, best field position yet for the visiting Raiders. Trying to get on the scoreboard here. Trailing 28 zip. Turn and give, Liddell trying to pick his way and there's nowhere to pick. Gain of one at best. Essentially, no game will make it second and 10 as the clock rolls now with less than two minutes remaining in the half. Well, you'd think they want to put one on the board here pretty quick to get back in this football game. Single wideouts left and right. Aguilar looks to throw, fires over the head of his intended receiver. And a penalty marker was indeed dropped in the secondary. Ryan, Ryan Jones with palms raised upward in disbelief. Pass interference, defense, will be 15 yard penalty. Well, it couldn't come at a better time for the Raiders trailing it here 28 nothing. A minute 41 left and the walk off is gonna push them near the red zone where Aguilar and company can try to strike from there before the half concludes. So first and 10 from the Endercom 28. Big rush, trouble, and he cannot escape a sack outside the 35. Well, it was great. They went to a direct snap, big pressure up the middle. Uh, really, uh, once again, the quick Tigers inside. Sua Topu Horta putting the heat. Let's look at this again. Not much room for Aguilar. Watch this pressure coming inside, outside, and particularly from that outside Lafayette, number five, having a huge game. Short drop, drop play. Liddell dumped as he gets to the 35, but he's ruled down there. And we're less than a minute with clock rolling. Well, I'll tell you, that's a great job in there by number five, two straight plays. I know why Coach Stark was talking about him, saying this guy is an outstanding player, plays multiple positions, never questions where you want to put him, he'll just play there. Third and long from the Intercom 36. Drop play, Liddell, uh-uh. Gets inside the 35 to pick up a yard or so. And outside coverage, uh, nicely handled by the Tigers. Got to Lue, very high, Ryan, the, the linebacker, quick to the ball. And now with fourth down and a timeout here by the Raiders. Well, the time called with Roughly 10 seconds remaining here in the first half. And a fourth down upcoming, fourth and nearly 20. Wonder what the Raider Brain Trust is gonna come up with here. Just an exquisite evening here in Natomas. 
a smattering of overcast that we saw with dusk deepening, you might say, but absolutely ideal conditions here. Shirt sleeve weather and lots of festivities swirling around the homecoming celebration. Well, I couldn't have had a better night than the, we're having here tonight. Little to no breeze, ideal conditions. Uh, you can see across the way, uh, homecoming halftime activities already seemingly getting underway here with 10 seconds. Want to remind you, Rick Stewart will be interviewing the head coaches and other guests at the half. So here's the fourth down play. Aguilar cranks it up, right sideline, underthrown, broken up and intercepted. Trajan Cotton with the pick. Well, he does it all, I guess you could say. The three-year veteran, Tejon Cotton, according to Coach Stark, he's being recruited as an athlete, can play defense, can play wide receiver, can play quarterback. So they're going to park the football just inside the five with uh, about three seconds remaining here. And... Uh, Imagine Indicum will just close out the half here and settle for their 28-0 lead. I would assume just take the knee and not even uh, run a play. You've got a 28, just knee and you get out of there. Okay, we're halfway home. As you see, the Tigers come off the field in their home royal blue and gold really demonstrating high quality football here in this first half. And as you see by the numbers, a comfortable lead at the intermission. Don't wander off, we'll be holding here because Rick Stewart will be gathering guests. Uh, starting off with, well, we'll just keep you in a little bit of suspense. And when I get the cue, we'll bounce it down to field level and start off with an array of interviews here during the intermission period on homecoming night for Indercom High. Okay, let's go to Rick Stewart. All right, thanks, Will. Coach, 28 nothing at halftime. Did you see anything you didn't like? No, we played real well. Our, our run defense was pretty good. I mean, we're, we're getting good breaks on the ball. Even the, uh, the penalty down here, man for man, our corners were tight on everybody. So our pass rush is looking pretty good. So I'm happy so far. Anything you would change in the second half or just more of the same? We just got to hang on the ball and, and, and work on our tempo, get faster, and try to get our misdirection bad, better and then find a way. We got to pound them a little bit more up the middle to keep the, to keep the clock moving. All right, Coach, so good luck in the second half. All right, guys, back upstairs to you. Well, thank you, Mr. Stewart. Terry Stark, I'm sure, is not too uh, riddled with stress at this point in time with a cozy lead of 28 zip. So we urge you to stick around. We've got lots more coming at you on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. We're in Natomas tonight, and it's homecoming night here for the host, Intercom Tigers. Stick around. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going biking. Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. 
So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I had something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Twenty-eight to nothing. Homecoming. Intercom is in the lead. Principal, Dan Motherspa. Dan. You got a, a mass of different things you do, especially at a school like this. Um, tell me part of what's going on here outside the athletic field. Sure, we're celebrating our school district's um, 25th anniversary this year, and uh, we're really excited about that. We've got lots of great programs here. Our school's growing. We're over 2,000 students now. We're graduating our first class of seniors in our California Early College Academy program. We just celebrated um, being part of one of the only uh, full IB continuums it, in the in the in the region uh, with our middle years program and diploma program we've expanded our athletics programs with uh, water polo this year uh, so we're growing leaps and bounds and doing all sorts of great things that are exciting now you mentioned ib that's the international baccalaureate for those who don't know about it quickly explain what that is yeah so it's a it's a, a program designed around a philosophy of teaching the whole child developing certain character traits um, and really teaching them to be good thinkers uh, is it, kind of at the core of it Okay, and you also have a great band here. Now we heard them, we talked to your band director earlier. How important is our programs like the band, uh, music and the arts for students growing up through the high school ages? You know, I think it's really important to create a full child that's also part of the IB philosophy, creating a well-rounded kid. And I think access to, to the arts and music is really important for our kids. And I think what we see here at our school is we see it really build our school culture. There's nothing like hearing that band come in and play to get people up off their feet. It just creates a great culture, and it's, it's, a, it's a great thing for all of our kids, kids to be able to get into. Now, how much of a charge was there on campus with it being homecoming? It was, it's been an exciting week. Um, of course, homecoming week is full of all sorts of uh, activities, pajama day and school spirit day and workout day. So the kids have been doing a great job. We had a big rally today. So we've got great school spirit here, and it's been fantastic. Now, a lot of schools don't do the rally thing anymore, but it's it was a big thing here. Absolutely. It's been part of our school culture, something that all of our kids look forward to uh, that really unites us as a school. Okay, now let's talk about sports here. You said you, uh, and I'm not going to go into it too deep because I'm going to talk with Matt Hinton in a few minutes, but you add, you add a major sport. How, how much trouble is that to do? You know, I, I think we have kids who really want to be connected to our school, and uh, we know that all sorts of activities, athletics, are a big part of that, um, and Matt's a great uh, athletic director. Um, so any opportunity we have to, to add to our programs is a, is a win for, for everyone. All right, uh, and you have problems, I mean, discipline. You, you're a principal like you with the attitude that you have. I mean, somebody comes in, they got to do something. Okay, they take care of it, it's done. There's no problem. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Dan, thanks for being with us, spending some time with us. 28 to nothing, it's, ho it's homecoming, and you're coming in the lead at halftime. We'll be right back. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. mm. <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! We're going biking! Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Maybe he's 
really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. We're at halftime, 28 to nothing on homecoming night. Always a lot of spirit. I'm here with Diane Roberts, who's the president of the Intercom Athletic Booster Club. First and foremost, there's more investment than that. You've got uh, a young man playing out here tonight. Yes, my son's on the varsity football team. Okay, now as, as a president of the Booster Club, it's not because you're out there. Are you faculty here as well? No, I'm a parent volunteer. Our whole Intercom Athletic Booster Club is run by parent volunteers, the parent volunteer organization. Okay, for those who may not know, what do you do? We do fundraising to support all the athletics. We have uh, 18 programs here at Intercom, and we support every single team. Now, what, what do you do? Sell pencils, pencils on a corner, car washes? I mean, we used to, well, in high school, we used to do car washes. <laughs> there's a drought, so we can't do that. But um, I Maybe was Maybe that's why there's a drought, because <laughs> we used to do car washes. I, would, I don't think so. Uh, we were selling pom-poms tonight, but and that's why I lost my voice. But um, we have a big fundraiser coming up, a poker night on November 5th. If anyone's interested in coming, you can find out on our website, www.intercomeathleticboosters.org. Find out all about it there. All right. Uh, the booster, I mean, how does one get into the boosters? We have general meetings on the third Monday of every month here at school at 6.30 p.m. They're on the school calendar, so they can come, and any parent, any community member can be involved. We need help from everyone. So, so you don't have to really be invested with a school, per se. No, that's true. Any community member can uh, contribute. Now, how long have you been doing this? Uh, this is my third year uh, in the presidency, and then I had a, another year before that. I'm so how did you get to be president? Were you elected, duly elected by your we members? It's a two-year term, and we have elections, yes. So you're going to abdicate after the two years and say, I don't yeah. want to be president anymore? Well, yeah. My son will graduate in um, 2018, and I will graduate, too. But you're still going to be a member of the community. You'll still have, you know, it's, it's almost like a tiger for life. Yes we, all, yes, we also have a Christmas tree sale. I'll keep buying Christmas trees. Uh, that's on December 3rd. And that's in conjunction with the PTSA, who has a holiday bazaar that same day. And I believe the band will be putting on a pancake breakfast that day. Wow, music, breakfast, and it's all for a good cause. Yeah, it's all for the kids. It's all for our students. How does uh, the, the group the boosters group think of things to do in the sense of looking to the forward and and how you do things um, well it's really a group effort we all get together and the, the ideas are generated at these meetings we have the general meeting who everybody's involved and then we have a board we have a uh, seven person board um, that we get together and we generate ideas as well excellent well thanks for spending some time with D Diane Diane Roberts president of the Intercom Athletic Booster Club it's 28 to nothing here at halftime on homecoming night. We'll be right back with more at halftime. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How's the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. OK, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. Mom, we're going Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. OK, honey, I'll be home soon. 
Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Twenty-eight to nothing. There's the halftime score. I'm here with athletic director Matt Hinton. Matt, athletics beyond football. What else is going on? How's basketball looking? Uh, well, we just hired a new coach. Uh, Dwayne Bishop's our new coach, and um, you know we we did a great job last year. We've made the playoffs again, and uh, we won the league. Of course, our girls' basketball team uh, went to the NorCal finals last year, and uh, which is fantastic for us because you know we're a public school, and. Um, We've got a full range. We uh, added water polo this year. Uh -huh. uh, we've got freshman girls soccer. Uh, we've added freshman boys um, uh, baseball. And uh, so we're rolling now. And uh, we, Numbers are up. Well, our numbers are up. They lifted the building moratorium out here. Uh, we've got an excellent academic schedule with our SICA and our IB team, uh, with our IB classes. Um, our, uh, everything is just rolling the right direction. We've got a very supportive uh, superintendent, uh, Chris Evans, um, he is all about um, uh, activities and athletics, and uh, we've started um, uh, elementary athletics and middle school athletics in our district now. So uh, we're, he, it's a great feeder system right now, and we're just we're happy to be a part of it. This is what it's all about. A big lead at halftime on homecoming. The the infectious spirit behind us going on. Well, here's the deal. You know, we've uh, we have built this up over the last 13 years, and this is not just uh, one person. This is a, a team of people have done this. Um, we have got an amazing band. Um, our cheer coach is fantastic. Um, our activities director, she is lights out. And, uh, and of course, we, it's hard to do all this without great support from our administration. And so, you know, this is, a, this is how we roll out here. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. Matt, great. thanks for spending some time you with us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Matt out. Hinton, athletic director. It's 28 nothing, halftime, homecoming night. You can see the crowd there. We'll be right back. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Well, nice to have you with us this evening. A very festive atmosphere here in Natomas. We're at Intercom High School. It's homecoming night for the Tigers and they are really rolling on the football field. 
leading 28-0 over River City. Let us show you the league standings. That would be the Tri-County Conference standings to show you how things were set up going into this ball game with a tie at the top. Well, there you have it. Look at Intercom 2-0 coming in. River City also. River Valley at 1-0. Um, and the rest of the league down there. Yuba City still in the running. And down below Woodland, Rielinda, and Pioneer now. It's a 17-team league, so one team is always having a buy in an odd number. And quite frankly, uh, Intercom has uh, got a battle. I know it doesn't look that way tonight, how impressive they look here in the first half. But uh, there's a little more parity going on in this league than normal, Will. They've won it so many times, 47-1 and one in league play and uh, speed galore. So it, it's tough for these other teams to compete. Yuba City with a new coach will be there. Uh, so we're off and started here, but the, it's only halfway. Well, as you can see there, River City and Intercom were tied for the top spot coming into action tonight. But there's a good reason why it's 28 nothing. Let's show you this other graphic as testimony to this outstanding Intercom defensive effort tonight. The Tigers tough tackling trio has made life real tough for the River City Raiders ball carriers. And there you see Levi Lafayette with coming into tonight 20 solos, 15 assists. Look at this, two sacks, fumble recovery. Sateke Topu, look at it, 23 solid tackles. Victor Jones, not starting, but with 20 solos coming in here, Will. Quite a trio there. Well, we're gonna bounce it down to Rick Stewart. I believe he's gathered Raiders head coach, Chris Baker, for a quick chat, and let's see what's on his mind as we turn it to Rick. All right, thanks, guys. Coach Baker, first half isn't exactly numbers-wise what you were looking for. What did you see out there? I'm uh, giving up the big plays and uh, breaking when we get down in the red zone there. Uh, caught us with a couple T over plays, and that draws really hurt us, too. Okay, what's we're, ha we're having trouble turning the chains. Okay. All right. What's going to be the big key for you in the second half? Well, we've made some adjustments on both sides of the ball. We hope to take some time off the clock and move those chains. That's really critical right now, kind of stop the bleeding type stuff. And then we're preaching attitude and effort. We're just going to keep playing hard no matter what happens. All right, thanks, Coach. You appreciate You're it. Good luck in the second Absolutely. half. Thanks for being with us. All right, guys, we'll send it back up to you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Stewart. They have tacked on some additional time here, as I thought they may. So still better than two minutes remaining before we open third quarter action. But Coach Domino, you've been very close to this Intercom program over the years, and Terry Stark has really uh, guided them to some impressive seasons. But they were a little bit at a crossroads tonight based on some early season injuries and still working some things in progress to tighten up. But looks like they may have found some solutions. Well, in talking with Coach Starks during the week for some time, as you look at Coach Stark talking, addressing his team, telling him the fact is, hey, forget the 28-0. Right now at 0-0, we got a second half to play, and that's what we want to do. We want to be as good as the first half and better, okay? Now, again, they were in disarray early in the season, and there you see Coach Baker uh, talking with officials, et cetera, and uh, hopefully his team can make uh, show uh, better on the field. There's Coach DePrado, um, his top assistant, assistant head coach, and trying to figure out. The big thing they got to figure out, of course, is speed element. And Coach Stark comes at you with misdirection. He's got a left-handed quarterback who can do a lot of things, and then a host of running backs. And so uh, not having face speed like this, and Coach Stark has been known for that for many, many years, putting four or five running backs into the ball game, wearing you out, et cetera. And then once again, he's uh, kind of doing that tonight, Will. Yes, he most certainly is. And just to add total perspective to this matchup tonight, the Endercom Tigers, of course, playing without their starting quarterback. Uh, Jimenez injured earlier in the season. And their top running back, a returning all-leaguer, Isaiah Perea, also unavailable tonight. So tough luck for the Raiders, and we'll see if they can turn things around. Let's go ahead and show you the first half stats in tonight's ball game, compiled by our executive statistician, Gary Martin. 
Well, there you look at the rushing yards. It's not even close. 16 yards total for the Raiders versus 204 passing yards. Big difference. Total offense, 320 to 26. First downs, 11 to 3. Penalties, nothing for the Raiders and 50 yards against the Tigers. Turnovers, one turnover there early in the game, none for the Tigers. Look at the time of possession. The Tigers have been dominating the clock and uh, possession of the football, and it's going to be tough for the Raiders to come back. But you know what? They received the second half. They've got an outstanding coaching half. I'm sure they're making some adjustments, Will. Well, quite naturally, um, you know, Coach Baker summed it up in just a couple of short sentences. Um, they're not able to move the chains offensively to get anything going on the scoreboard. And uh, Indercom has really been effective on certain plays that um, have fooled the Raiders and resulted in the three long plays that set them up. Just prior to the half, they did stop them and force the Tigers to punt. Now, that's the last thing that kind of happened there before the half. So maybe those kids can uh, recall that and play tough D. And uh, I'll tell you this, that they're up against a lot of speed and they've got to hold their blocks longer on offense. They are opening some holes, but the Tigers close it quickly. Well, the Tigers set to kick off here. Monroy boots it and Liddell's coming up to take it at the 20 yard line. And he crosses the 30 and makes the 32 or 33. And that's where the visiting Raiders will open shop here in the second half. So it'll be interesting to note exactly what adjustments have been made and if anything new is introduced to this Raiders offense here in the third quarter. Well, we're going to find out with this first series here. And a penalty flies after the whistle blows. And a little, uh, dead ball, encroachment, defense. That is penalty number six against Endercombe. Six penalties now for 55 yards. The Raiders yet to be whistled or flagged. First and five. Turn and fake, give it to flag. Virtually no gain on the play. Well, flag seeing some action in the backfield uh, in relief of uh, Ricky Liddell. Uh, flag shows a lot of athleticism in that secondary will in the first half, very impressive. He gets about a half yard on the play. It'll bring up a second and a long four. Right side running, a nice cut and near first down yardage. It's going to be very close, and we'll see what they decide to do, whether they measure or not. Well, I guess I'm led to believe that number 78, Austin McConnell was inserted at running back for that play, and he's about a foot shy of a first down. Turn and give, power plus, first down and an extra four yards to go with it. Well, All right. Nice hard running there by Riley Tilson, the starting fullback, first down Raiders. Well, as Coach Baker mentioned, they got to move the chains, control the clock in order to get, to get a good drive going and hopefully get on the scoreboard. Back to throw, Aguilar nearly picked, broken up on tight coverage and doing a whale of a job in the secondary, Davion Ross with the breakup. Well, when you look at that athleticism and look at that secondary of gay, Bible, et cetera, Bible cotton. They're sorting out a penalty here and we'll get the announcement from Dan Bucky. Penalty number seven against Intercom. Defensive holding apparently. And it's a major walk off and a first down for the Raiders. So 
the visitors catching some breaks here in this first series to open the third quarter. Yep, we certainly that's a way to move the chains. From the Intercom 43, first down for the Raiders. Up there, the middle for a couple. They're just lining up and running those leads right over their big left side over Rodriguez and Mafi. Mafi at six feet, 304 pounds. Gerardo Rodriguez at that guard spot there, only 5'9", but 230, very tough. Running left most of the time. The first down was just the fifth of the game for River City, three of those by way of penalty. Aguilar rolling and throwing, dropped. He had an open receiver, but threw behind him, and Nate Cornell, the tight end, unable to make the grab, reaching back. Wide open, as you mentioned, Will, wide open. Plenty of time to throw, nothing, you know, again, um, that comes from inexperience, and he's gonna get there with more snaps, but uh, that was a good call. It would have been enough almost to move the chains, and they gotta do more of that. Third and nine. Big Cor play. Cornell out, Nelson in. And they're overloaded to the near side with three receivers. Early third quarter, 9.50 to go, but Intercom up big, 28 zip, and a whistle's gonna bust play here. Delay of game will cost the Raiders five. First penalty against the Raiders. So the football moved back from, to the Intercom 47. Big rush, he steps up, throws deep down the middle, he's got a man. And the official has knocked down the back judge who may not have even seen the play as he tumbled. The intended receiver was tripped up. Hey, if we could see that again, that, that, that was unfortunate. Here we go, another look. They're one of their top receivers for sure, Angelo Bruce. Definitely had his stride broken there. Without a question, he had a chance to catch the football, and I, that's unfortunate that the official did not see all of it, apparently getting tripped up himself. Is that what they call a blown call? Oh. Okay, so punt formation shown by the Raiders after the no call. Bad snap. Back to get it. Trouble. And trying to salvage, doing a tremendous job of power running on the loose look out first down on one of the wildest plays we have seen yet donny castro give him the football donny castro running over people oh my goodness yes let's see it again here's the snap way what? over his head fallows the first one at him and look couldn't at make him. the stop Busting tackles, you can't bring me down. Turning up the field. They're not about to stop that steamroller. He broke four tackles on the play. The total gain, absolutely remarkable. First and 10 after the 21 yard burst from oh. deep in the backfield. From the 26, short yardage. Well, if you count the 21 from the line of scrimmage and the account the other 21, it probably was a 42-yard run. Yes, it was, and it was a beautiful replay. Thanks, guys. We got to see the best part of that wild play. And it's now second and nine from the Intercom 25. Aguilar to throw on the run. Poorly thrown ball, picked off. And making the tackle, Riley Tilson, the intended receiver. And I'll tell you, Ross has been making a living out there on that corner. Davion Ross with his fourth interception of the season. Well, Davion Ross, a good all-round player. Um, another one of the fleet's running backs. Here you see Aguilar off in there and forcing the ball to the side, and Ross is just waiting there. 
his fourth interception of the season, second of the game for the Tigers. Cotton also had an interception back in the first half. So it sets up Indercom, first and 10. They dodge the bullet on a weird drive that fizzles. Up the middle, running tough to bring down, finally deep in the secondary. Well, number 14 with a great run. Evans having a good night. One of the stable of backs in Coach Stark's ball club. He uses, we say three or four born, more like five or six. Let's take a look at this coming around from that right wing spot inside and picking up big time yards. Gain of 13, make it first and 10 for the Tigers. Football spotted at the Indercom 38. Left side, near side running. Strung out pretty good and well defended. Lateral pursuit not allowing anything there. And that time Evans unable to find the daylight. Nowhere for him to go. Good job by the defense stringing that out. Let's have a look at that. There you see a hand off to the right half back on a fly play and nowhere to go. Excellent coverage in there, particularly number 21 waiting for him there. Keith Cole along with a host of Raiders. Nate Vasquez helping with the tackle, the sophomore backer. Evans now four carries for 27, nearly seven yards a pop. Up the middle, open daylight running, big speed to the outside, and it is doubtful to the five. Touchdown, Tigers. D'Angelo Morgan scoring from 60 yards out. D'Angelo Morgan with a great run. If when we see that again, I can tell you once again, speed, once he turned the corner on that, it, no one can catch him again. A host uh, using a host. I, I'm counting at least six running backs tonight. Well stocked as usual. Stark's battalion of speedy runners. So Monroy trying to tack on the PAT. High snap, mistimed and blocked. No good on the PAT, tough D by the Raiders. But right. at 732, they forge a 34-0 lead. Let's As go to Rick after this replay. And there you see Morgan on his way. No one's gonna catch him there, great effort. Not giving up. Okay, Rick. All right, I do have the homecoming king and queen here first. Mariah Zernick, how's it feel to be homecoming queen. I'm so honored to have been chosen out of all the girls that were chosen. They're all beautiful and I'm so proud of them. And you're a cheerleader as well, so you got, you got your job to do after this. <laughs> uh, well, we just have a lot of homecoming routine for the Kings game that we're coming up for the cheer. All right, sounds good. Well, congratulations. Okay, Nemo Chapman, homecoming king. Did you expect this? No, I didn't, not at all. So how big of a surprise is it? It was a pretty big surprise. Someone won it like four years in a row, so. Uh, yeah. So you broke the streak. So uh, you're a senior this year? Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations on being homecoming queen tonight, king tonight. <laughs> I'm not going to put you in that category. Congratulations to both of you tonight. Guys, we'll send it back up to you. It's all part of homecoming spirit. Thank you, Rick. Here's the kickoff taken at the 25 and a short return near the 30, and that's where River City will take over. The Intercom scoring drive, 74 yards, three plays, the big one, Morgan, a 60-yard burst. D'Angelo Morgan for the score. Football parked at the River City 35. And we'll see what Aguilar and company can do here. Midway third. Turn and give, not much doing there on a straight ahead blast. Pariah into the game. This is their top back. He missed three games earlier in the season with a badly sprained ankle, re-aggravated it, and really we weren't counting on seeing him in today's game, but Coach Baker with the score what it is, using his best discretion here, and a nice gain, second and six. Deep throw, right sideline, broken up. Nice effort there. Angelo Bruce, the intended receiver. Cotton was back there. I would say that was Aguilar's probably best pass he's thrown tonight. He put the ball right there. 
The ball was catchable. Cotton defended him. Davion Ross defended. Yeah. But I tell you, put the ball there. He put the nose up and laid it out. Nice throw by Aguilar. Incomplete third. And a long six. Liddell in motion down the line. Aguilar drops, gets some pressure now, and he's sacked from behind. Fallow turning the corner beautifully and registering the sack. Let's have another look at this. You see Rush coming in, Fallow coming in from the backside, breaks his block, takes on uh, quarterback Aguilar for a big loss. Punt formation, and the big guy hits a low liner, Donnie Castro, and it will be roll and be downed. Well, I'm impressed with Donnie Castro, a decent punter, and I'll tell you what he plays, starting right guard does a good job blocking, and uh, obviously he can run the football as well. Well, he's got the longest run of the day for, if I'm not mistaken, for this Raider offense, and it was a fluke, but what a tremendous effort. He wasn't about to go down. Another penalty against Intercom on the punt play. No apparent vocal clarification from game referee Dan Bucky. Well, along with that, it'd be nice to have some physical mechanics to go with it. Those do go, they do go hand in hand, right? Yeah, they, it, it does uh, inform us when those things happen. So it's a first and 10 from the Endercom 18 yard line. So far, it's been a complete ball game turned in by Terry Stark's outfit up the middle and being dragged down near first down yardage. And again, getting the call, D'Angelo Morgan. Well, Morgan with the call, and then once again, using all these backs with fresh legs, it, it appears that, uh, it, it, you know, it's having an effect on that Rio uh, River City D, no question about it. They've slowed down, they're showing a little, getting a little tired here now, because they're constantly having to chase fresh legs. To the near side, first down yardage and a whole lot more. Flag with an impressive tackle, but the play there very well executed. Levi Lafaeli with the carry. The, the junior is so impressive. Move the stakes, first down. Very, very impressive. Uh, I can tell you this, that he's one of the better athletes we've seen this year on both ends of the football, and I would say Looking ahead, he definitely want to be the top seniors in the area next year. I would be shocked if he wasn't. Gain of 11 on the play. Six carries for 52 for this young man, averaging better than eight per carry. Near side running to the short side. Shut down without much running room. And uh, Evans, besides Morgan, getting a nice workout tonight as well. Yeah, let's watch Evans on the, on the wing around and just running the sweep to the wide side. Now he's on the left side, ha left hash, and um, they can pretty much run what they want because that River City D has been on the field a long time. Gain of four, Evans now 31 yards and five carries as the Tigers come up to the line, clock rolling. Here with 5.05 to go. Big hole left side. See where they spot him, but he's very close to a first down. Well, if he gives them the right marker, they'll move the chains again. And once again, Levy having a super night. And that brings uh, not only it move the chains, but it, I'm sure that the running game of the Tigers is well over 300 yards right now. Oh, they're piling it up, no doubt. First and 10 football parked at the Tiger 49-yard line. 
Robinson has motored for 126 yards on six carries in a couple of long plays. That aerial is right on target, short of a first down and secondary gang tackling. With the catch, Tariq Bible, who had a touchdown reception earlier, give him nine on the play, second and one from the Raider 41. Well, I'm impressed with Trajan Cotton's throwing to the off field with his left hand. Watch his play action turns and throws. Two people are open, wide open there. Bible open and follow was open number one as well. Eric Creer with the tackle. Now here's second and one. First down and more all the way to the 35 yard line. The misdirection as you see Cotton getting up there has really been very effective this evening. He certainly has. He's a three-year veteran. Uh, he's got a good left-hander. Once again, first down, Tigers, as they're controlling this football game, wearing down the Raider, Raider D. I would take another look. Watch, watch Trajan takes the ball himself and get a couple of extra yards. Nothing there, really, on that uh, option play. He broke Nate option. Cornell's tackle there. It was a gain of six. Left side running, big hole, no one there. Down the left sideline, out of bounds inside the 10. Another long gainer, Lawrence Evans. Well, they can run it that off tackle play all night. They pull people, huge hole, first down and goal. Evans having a big night. Watch this action, watch the lineman pull, turn up the running lane, it's wide open. Good blocking in the secondary, a couple of missed tackles. 27 yards on the carry to the Raider eight yard line. So again, deep into the red zone come the Tigers leading it 34 nothing here with just over three minutes remaining in the third. Turn and give inside running. Morgan in there. Touchdown Tigers, D'Angelo Morgan. A variety of backs employed by Terry Stark's Tigers, all very, very effective. Morgan scores from eight yards out, making it 40 to nothing here late in the third at the 3.08 mark. So Morgan and Evans have really come off the bench to provide big minutes and big results. PAT is drilled home by Monroy and at 3.08 late third, the Tigers are on the board again and now lead it 41-0. As we go to break, you'll see the most recent of the Tiger touchdown. Stay with us, lots more to come on the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Sir, go and step out of the vehicle for me. Yes, sir. A short kickoff fielded and a breakaway run finally chopped and dropped, crossing the 45 to about the 47 yard line. Outstanding run, Ricky Liddell on the kickoff return, setting up the Raiders nicely.
from the River City 47-yard line. Raiders trying to crank up some offense here late in the third. Nope, way too much leakage. Defenders were already in the backfield and Perea coming in under tough conditions with two tough carries. Well, it is. It's tough uh, because the Tigers are fresh on defense. They're very quick. And then Sua takes up at least two holes in the middle. Uh, so the linebackers are free. Aguilar throws to Perea, who's well covered and dropped at the line of scrimmage. Just all over that on that corner play. Looked like it, Bible making the coverage Bible, there. Two-way starter Bible, Tariq Bible. Outstanding, I would say. So all 6'4", I mean, looks like a basketball player. Good receiver and outstanding corner. I'm sure somebody's gonna be on him. Well, he's got very, he's very talented. No gain, third and 12 from the Raider 45. Aguilar steps off, takes a gander at the field. And a timeout called for and given to River City. It comes at the 143 mark, late third. And we're gonna step back and take a quick breather ourselves for just 30 seconds. Don't wander off. Hey Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming! Bye, boys, bye, Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in. Because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Welcome back. Nice to have you with us this evening on a beautiful night here in the Thomas. We're at Intercom High School for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. With Jim Domino and Rick Stewart, I'm Will James. As we focus in late in the third quarter, host Intercom winning big, 41 zip. A throw to the tight end, complete over the middle on the hook up to Nate Cornell. Shy of a first, but a good game. Outstanding effort by Cornell in there and well thrown. Time to roll the dice for Chris Baker and company. Fourth and two. Here they come. They blast off the left side and it's going to be close. Let's see where they spot. Well, the Tigers think they didn't make it. They look about a half a yard short. And it is apparent that they are. So the ball goes over on downs. And the Tigers take over first and 10 at the Intercom 45. So tough luck as we look across the way at the River City sideline and their players and coaching contingent. Chris Baker knew this would be a tough road trip tonight against a highly respected opponent. Well, I think that Coach Stark's ball club is rounding into form at the right time, Will, ready for a second half run. It would appear so. And having already won a toughie on the road at Yuba City, uh, they're focusing on who holds the toughest competition for them going down the stretch. Well, they have um, a multiple weapons. It looks like Cotton is healing and has thrown a pretty good ball. Cotton, the secondary looks solid. They're getting outstanding blocking, huge holes. A five yard penalty against Endercom, first and 15, don't know what the call was. And the run play is gonna be stymied and chopped. Unable to get away that time, D'Angelo Morgan. Tough D there by the Raiders. 
Well, I look at with the scoreboard the way it is, and I look at the intercom to kind of slow things down and stay pretty basic and not pull anything special, uh, particularly when they're getting filmed and the film exchange, et cetera, is no need. And, and perhaps maybe wanting to rest up a few people to run this, you know, to be able to run this stretch drive. Robinson gets the carry and vaults over a tackler, picks up a few as he's dropped crossing the Intercom 45, and that may be the final play of the third quarter, but we have a fallen Tiger. So we have a stoppage of play as the fallen Tiger is being attended to. And let's go ahead and toss down to Rick Stewart. And uh, I believe he has a special guest, Rick. All right, we got a moment here. Brie Larson, cheer and activities coach. This is all you tonight. It's actually all my students. They're the best, they're leaders. They work hard and they love, they have a lot of pride in their school. So I'd like to say I help guide them there because it's all them, hard work. Well, it is the guidance that you give your students, but these are athletes too. There's no, there's no discussion about that. Yes. They work very hard, we practice hard. They are very prideful, they want to work hard, they want to be good. So yes, they, they work hard. Now, how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been coaching cheer for almost 20 years, but I've only been at, actually at Intercom for three. Wow, okay, good job. Thanks for being with us, spending a couple minutes with us tonight. Of course, thank you for being here. All right, thanks, Bree. All right, guys, we'll send it back upstairs to you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Stewart. The final seconds of the third quarter ticking off here. And through three, it has been all Indercom on the Tigers homecoming night. 41 nothing after three. We'll be back for fourth quarter action here on Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Nice to have you with us tonight. It is a beautiful evening. We're in Natomas. For Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week and Intercom High School, the site where it's homecoming night and the festivities have been abundant and the action on the field has pleased all the home crowd contingent with the host Tigers on top 41 nothing as we open fourth quarter play. Nice broken tackle there on a third and 12. They cross midfield and get into Raider territory at the River City 49. Well, uh, once again, uh, Intercom staying very, very basic. And, and this is a good time uh, with fourth and four to work on your kicking game and punt the football, irregardless of the 41-0 score. Punt the football. Uh, check on your special teams. So it appears to be punt formation shown by Julian Battle and the Tigers. Wobbly and short, and it bounces out of bounds outside the River City 30, so the Raiders get some good field position. They sure do. Home crowd being treated lavishly with the Tigers' defensive prowess and explosive offense. The platoon of running backs has been most impressive again tonight for Terry Stark's Tigers. First down for Aguilar and the Raiders. Liddell breaks three tackles and struggles forward and makes the 35. Nice effort. 
excellent effort by Liddell. Very impressive. Runs hard. Great second after after contact. Picked up five on that. Football at the River City 36. As they stay on the ground, broken tackles and first down running for the Raiders. Big hole. Never say die is their motto. They will play to the bitter end, according to Coach Chris Baker. Yeah. Liddell showing some nice inside running there. Very definitely quick openers running, be running between the tackles. Watch this hole. A give to Liddell. Cuts. Nice move. Keeps his legs moving. Gain of 12. Turn and give. Not this time. He's dropped for a two-yard loss. First penetration 46. on the backside. Definite penetration on the backside with the Tigers. They've done a good job up front with Horta, Sua, Topu. Excellent linebacker core from the outside, giving pressure Lafayette and follow along with the inside backers, Bonoit, Gatole. Second and 11, Aguilar throws deep, but it's underthrown and intercepted. Well, I'll tell you, he's had another field day out in the secondary. Davion Ross, and wow. And Davion Ross with his second pick of the game and fifth of the season. Well, once again, you look at that secondary, they're extremely athletic. The ball was underthrown. Play action pass, watch a rollout, off it. Aguilar going downfield, and it's unfortunate because number 80 was behind the coverage. He was open. Allen Rivers had the secondary beat. He certainly did. But the ball goes over. First and 10 for the Tigers. Indercom will open at their 20. We're just into the fourth quarter. It's been a one-sided affair thus far, and here come the running Tigers turning the corner. Big speed, near sideline, and finally crossing midfield and being dropped. Halted on the play. Antonio Fikes. Tony Fikes with a big run, a big run now, and Coach Stark emptying his bench, getting everybody into the action. Watch this run by Fikes. Once again, the Raiders have been on the field. The defense is tired. Uh, I believe Coach Stark is trying to stay basic here clock continues to roll despite the out of bounds tackle eight minute mark running clock in effect first down from the 48 good noble effort but dropped for a two yard loss in the backfield and Tim Gay with the carry It's a two yard loss. The football is going to be spotted here at the Tiger 46. Bringing up a second and 12. Trying to shake loose and drag tacklers. Another time consuming carry as Indercom stays with their ground game. That's their bread and butter. Well, it is, and they're going to stay just stay as basic as it can. He's using a multitude of backs, uh, trying to keep Ross and Robinson healthy and Lafayette. Meanwhile, Morgan's getting his share of carries. Evans is getting a lot of carries. Number seven, Fikes getting some carries. Basic formation, nothing fancy here. Sweep right. And Antonio gets another carry. Fikes dropped near first down yardage. Well, they love that play. They can run off tackle all day with that jack play, and it's wide open. Uh, they do a great job pulling and creating those running lanes. Take a look at this. He bounced it outside. Young Fikes. Antonio Fikes.
Well, they were short a man, and I don't know if Coach Stark got the timeout in in time. There you see Coach Stark's young son, Miles Stark, calling a great game from the, his skybox role and now coming on the field. Uh, young. Well, we're just about at the six minute mark and the crowd getting a little restless to continue their homecoming festivities with the game in hand. And this is part of an entire week that also featured throughout the week activities and then a rally earlier today and then the homecoming game and then a homecoming dance tomorrow. Well, it is, and I was very impressed with that halftime show, Will, with each class doing their skit. Very impressive, well organized, don't well you think? Well done, absolutely. Well, Fike is driven backwards, and that is a sampling of terrific intensity there. Linebacker Jason McClusack, 33, issuing that stop. Ball carrier number seven, Tony Fikes. So the ball goes over, first and 10, Raiders. I see a lot of clean jerseys out on defense out there with very few starters and out on the field will well we're going to have a new football put into play but this will give me a chance to remind you that rick stewart will be interviewing our players of the game in our post game segment also the victorious head coach so you won't want to miss that stick around There's lots more to come here on the hometown sports game of the week turn and give Perea, tough back, quality back. Returning all leaguer, playing on an injury, reaches midfield, Isaiah Perea. Well, it appears like we have a new quarterback uh, leading the Raiders. Well, the third string quarterback that got put into the second string position is wide out Angelo Bruce. At the quarterback spot now, yes. Gain of eight, second and two. Perea again trying to find daylight. Hit hard twice at midfield. No gain. Well, even the backups, you know, even their corners, Gay and Ross, are very, very quick on the run. Safety's Cotton Bible. They're not in the ball game. They've got some new corner, new secondary in, but they're very, very quick, Will. So third and a short four upcoming for the Raiders. Of course, they've got a lot of pride, and they'd like to get into the end zone, get on the board here. 4.05 left in the game, clock rolling. Turn and give. Nice move to break outside and run for a first down. Well, Ricky's doing a fine job. That would be Ricky Liddell, first down Raiders. Well, Lloyd Brown coming in from his outside linebacker position, very quick, number 10, very impressive. He over pursued, but came back and made the tackle. 3.40 to go, clock rolling, late fourth. Turning, Liddell trapped, but lunges forward and gets a couple. It's gonna bring up second and about nine. Well, I gotta believe they're gonna have to mix things up here and go upstairs somewhere in this drive. Somewhere, yeah, and um, I'm sure that Bruce can throw the football. I know he can catch it. We know that. But um, give him, Angelo Bruce, an opportunity here. Mix up in the backfield. And the Raiders lucky to get one out of that. But it's going to bring up third and long. Less than three minutes remaining. Well, I thought they'd bring in Castro at fullback. Raiders having been hit hard with injuries in the first half of the season. And we see Austin McConnell shaking off a foot or a leg injury there. Third and nine.
Tilton showed the motion. Uh-uh. Angelo Bruce, nowhere to go on that. No receivers open, and that'll bring up fourth and nine. Fourth and long. Well, uh, again, it looks like the punt team coming in. I'm a little surprised as we're getting near the end of the game. Two minutes to go, uh, perhaps where they wouldn't try to move the chains. Well, maybe Castro's gonna fake punt and run. Well, he blasted it out of there with less than two minutes remaining, and it's gonna roll and die just outside the Tiger 10. We'll call it the 11. 37 yards on the kick and roll. And Intercom will send its offensive unit out with about a minute and a half remaining. Running clock winding down, and this, despite the running clock, has been a pretty rapidly played game uh, with all the run plays and the clock continuing to roll. I would think we'd see uh, knee time. Okay, first and 10 from the 11, less than a minute remaining. And there's your kneel down. An impressive festivity display put on by the Intercom High School Activities Committee, the respective classes, freshman through senior on homecoming night. Well, they did their job, the band did their job, and of course, the football team's job was to come, come away with a victory so that you enjoy a great weekend, homecoming weekend put together. Another kneel down with 20 seconds to go, and that should just about put a pink ribbon wrapped around this package. As the teams leave the field and the countdown from 10 seconds is going to conclude this tri-county conference clash with a 41-0 Intercom victory as they now improve to 3-0 and in league while the Raiders slip to 2-1 and and thereby Intercom taking over sole possession of first place in the TCC. You see the good sportsmanship there on the field. It was a one-sided affair, but lots of respect being exchanged out there by these two opposing squads. Very definitely. Uh, good spirit, good sportsmanship by both squads. Um, Actually, a pretty clean ball game. Very, I believe, only one penalty maybe against uh, River City. That was about it. But uh, just too much, too much Tiger tonight on both sides of the football. Well, Terry's club looked like they're coming into form. And uh, unfortunately for River City, along with their injuries, et cetera, never having faced a ball club with speed at all positions. Well, don't wander off. We've got a full post-game show coming up. Rick Stewart will be interviewing players of the game, and uh, we'll be throwing in some tidbits ourselves. So don't wander off. Lots more to come. Stay with us. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. The verdict is in and the decision is final this evening in Natomas where tonight on homecoming night, the host Intercom Tigers prevail mightily with a 41-0 decision over visiting River City. Back with Jim Domino and Rick Stewart, I'm Will James, and 
we certainly saw the overall game played tonight by Terry Stark's outfit, and I have to believe that he was looking for an overall performance at this stage of the season. Very definitely. They struggled early in the year with a multitude of injuries plus some other internal uh, problems. It seems like they've uh, solved some of those problems uh, and got some people back as well as getting people healthy, uh, a number of them. And, and number one, I've got to say that Tejon, Trajan Cotton is a key. They, they have so many weapons, but Trajan Cotton runs this football team and runs it well and has got a decent arm and you don't face many left-handers defend defenses you know you know they know he's a left-hander but you're not seeing the ball coming out that way but he shows me a good athleticism and a nice arm and he's got outstanding receivers to go with that run game will oh he does indeed he's got an overall game and he's got a lot of composure the way he handles himself and excellent mechanics at that quarterback position and you know he turned in a pass interception from the secondary as a two-way starter and again demonstrated the versatility that most of the outstanding stars have these days speaking of secondary what did you think of that secondary will well i'm highly impressed uh, i was before we even arrived here today because statistically it appeared that ross and gay at the corners and cotton and bible at the safeties is quite a quartet uh, ross turned in two more interceptions so Despite concentration on offense and the 41 points, Ross was definitely, definitely one of the top players in tonight's game. For that matter, so was Bible, and Gay had his moments. So that quartet in the secondary, that's about as tough as they come and maybe the best we'll see this season. Collectively, uh, that's very possible, Will, because they're four outstanding athletes. And as we go around and check these teams out, they're not as small as some sec secondaries, but the smallest one's about a 5'11 guy. And they got 6'1 Cotton and 6'4 um, Tariq Bible back in the safeties. Tough to throw over. Boy, no kidding. Um, and it posed problems all night long for Aguilar in the River City passing game. Well, let's splash our graphic and see who we heralded as our players of the game. And oh my goodness, the outstanding Isaiah Flagg one of the better safeties you're going to see in this area for the River City Raiders. And then we were just compelled to go for the trifecta. Numbers three, four, and five, Cotton, Robinson, and Lafayette uh, turning in just super-duper performances. And for two of those young men, two-way standout performances. Let's turn our attention down to field level and pick up Rick Stewart. He is standing by with our players of the game. Rick? Well, we got a crowd down here, guys. First of all, uh, Isaiah Flagg. Tough night out there. Scoreboard may not really indicate how tough the game was in that sense. You're one of the better safeties, as we've talked about all night long. Tell me what you saw out there that their offense was doing. I seen a lot of motions. Better than that. That's all I got to say. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Congratulations. Best of luck the rest of the season. Good job tonight, Isaiah. All right. We're going to turn here. Okay. The man that makes it all work, Trajan Cotton. Trajan, good game tonight. The rushing attack was, you know, horrendous from their point of view. You guys piled it up, I think, unofficially, you know, about 340, 350 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. What was working out there? Uh, everything was working. We, we faked great. Our team fakes. Uh, that, that's what our offenses ran off, just fakes and uh, intensity and tempo and tempo, get, get the team unbalanced and uh, get them uh, off their feet. Okay, now when you had to throw, you guys have guys like Josh Fowler making a one-handed catch and doing that. Uh -huh. That's a weapon, dude. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. I love playing with Josh Fowler, Tariq Bible, all those dudes. Davion Ross, I have a lot of playmakers on my team and I love them all. It must be like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on being one of our players of the game, first and foremost. Right. Second of all, good luck the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Three and two coming into tonight, mm -hmm. people might have gone, I don't know, but you guys have some power. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. Uh, we just start off a little slow. Our team is really building together. We're becoming a real great team. Our team, we bought in. We bought into the uh, to the goal we're trying to get. We're trying to we're trying to do big things this season, and uh, we could do it. All right. Best of luck the rest of the season, dude. Good job. Good job. All right. We're gonna turn now. Dio Robinson, 
couple long breakaway runs that really set the team up tonight. What was the key on those runs? Uh, the key was play it slow, uh, do your job, get the handoff, and once you see the green, take off. Play it slow, do your job. I mean, it's so simple as that. Mm -hmm. hey, follow behind your line, really. It's, it's really your line. The line opened some huge holes for you out there tonight. Yes, sir. I love them very much. That's we're like we could get in the sink very well at practice, and coach says it pays off in the game. So me and my line have a very good relationship. Well, it obviously does. What do you guys have to do to keep going forward in this mode? Uh, stay focused. We every game we're on to the next. We don't repeat. Talk about what happened before. Only focus on the future. Tomorrow we turn the page. It's another opponent. Yes, sir. All right. Good job tonight, Mr. Robinson. Thank See you. you. Best of luck. All right, Levi, great game tonight. At one point, you were probably one of the leading rushers early in the game, but I think some of your teammates might have eclipsed that. But you, you play saw. We had you as a defensive jam going in, but you showed up offensively. What's better? Um, either one, to be honest. Um, I just want to thank my O-line for all the support they gave me, you know, making me run them, getting them, uh, getting them yards, you know. Without them, I wouldn't even get no yards. So just want to give props to the O-line. Okay, now, you're a junior. You're, you're doing what you're doing, learning as you go. You're going to be ready. The rest of this year, you're still going to gain experience. But next year, you're going to be a monster, both sides of the ball. Yes, sir. I'm going to just uh, try my best and uh, give God all the glory, you know? Well, what's the key for you in your thing when you do this on the game? You know, staying focused and uh, just watching film, keep watching film, coming to practice on time, you know, just working hard every day. What else are you going to do? Good job tonight being one of our players of the game. Best of luck going forward. Have a good season. All right, we'll see you again. All right, Coach, unofficially 340, 350 yards rushing. I mean, that might be low, but at the same time, you guys pounded him tonight. You know, for this year, uh, that's what we've been working for. We usually are that type of team. And all the injuries early with our backfield and our quarterback's thumb and our receiver's collarbone, uh, we had to really start over. And we put some new, we lost two running backs. We put new running backs in there. We had, they, who had to learn the system. So it was about a month long process to get to this point. Okay, now all night long, it looked like every time you guys had the ball, there was a new running back run in place. I mean, you have, still have a stable of running backs. We, we, have, we have some depth, but a lot of them haven't played before. So uh, it was great to get them in there in the second half and, and let them have some success. And, Hopefully we have another good, great week of practice and, and, and we get a nice backfield of, of backups in there. Now you got a shutout tonight. Tell me how well your defense played in your eyes. This is the best they've, they've played this year. Um, our defense has actually been fairly solid, but our offense has been so bad with no passing game and injured running backs that we put our defense in a hole all year long. We've always hit and got to the ball. But today, when our offense plays good, the defense is allowed to play a lot better. Obviously, obviously. Good job tonight, yeah. Coach. Best of luck going forward the rest of the season. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, guys, a lot of players of the game that are well worthy of it all. We'll send it back up to you. 41 nothing halftime at, at uh, homecoming. That's what you look for. Thank you very much, Rick. Yes, uh, happy evening for the hosts on their homecoming night. A decisive victory. and. As Terry Stark says, uh, still a little bit of a work in process, in progress with uh, the new running backs learning the system. But if tonight's any indication, uh, they'll be all right. I think so, too. With four games remaining, uh, they look like the team to beat and defend that title that they've held for many, many years. That 48-1 40, record uh, goes a long way. And here they are now, 3-0 uh, and o in competition. And uh, with four more league games on the platter, they look like they're rounding in the form, and I'm sure that the rest of the Tri-County League doesn't want to see that. Well, I, I would have to echo that sentiment. Uh, the, the rulers of the Tri-County are now really looking like rulers, and uh, watch out for them down the stretch. Let's take a look at the final numbers for our stats compiled by our executive statistician, Gary Martin. And what we had estimated as the rushing game was even more than we thought. 387 on the ground tonight for the Tigers. Well, very impressive uh, with a host of backs. Great blocking up front. I mean, look at that, 387 passing yards. Wow, look at that. Total offense. Individually speaking, to back up that rushing game, uh, Robinson, 126 yards, and then uh, 
Evans chipped in with 58. Uh, Lafayette 52. And D'Angelo had his share, 85 yards, to you know, really complement each other for th a total of 385. They put up 125 through the air, so you know you're looking at 500, 500 Bye -bye. plus, and uh, who who can argue with that? That's a lot. Now look at the first downs, 18 to seven. They dominated that, and despite 76 yards of penalties on eight different penalties, uh, that didn't didn't hurt them at all. They handled that. No turnovers is something that Coach Stark really had a marvel on. When you look down the whole column, no matter how high the other numbers are, this is a super number oh, because that's not a self-destruction where you got three turnovers on the left column. And, of course, giving up the football from time to time and not worried about how much scoring. But the the balance of, of, of Poe or time of possession kind of almost evened out in the second half. It did, and that's why statistics statistics can be misleading uh, they don't tell the entire story and as far as the turnovers are concerned yes the zero for Indercom huge for Terry Stark he had commented previously on the difficulty in that area it looks like they've taken care of business and the three turnovers all pass interceptions two by Ross one by Cotton to take care of the secondary concerns well as mentioned that uh, secondary is as good as they get it, um, it is as good as they get. They've got outstanding athletes. And the players that are going both ways for Coach Stark are outstanding athletes and look like they're in good shape. Now for Chris Baker and his River City Raiders, a tough loss tonight. Uh, they got pounded pretty good on the road here, but they've got a lot of heart, and they've got a coaching staff that delivers the education from all the right spots and they're doing it for the right reasons and I look for them to rebound and continue to have their program escalate year by year. Without a question, I think they're on the, they're right on the right track. And they've got two good leaders in Coach DePrado and Coach Baker who know what they're doing. They've got a world of experience. The kids are lucky to have two fine coaches and educators in those two and I'm and, and with the rest of the staff that they have as well. So they're on track. And they just ran into, uh, again, the, not only the defending champion, but a team that is just coming in uh, to play with loaded with speed. And I think it's fair to say, since Coach Stark alluded to the number of key injuries his team has suffered, Coach Baker's ball club was down five starters before Cole got reinstated. And we saw Perea at the end of the ball game, certainly not at 100% capacity. So they were hit hard there, too. We did not see their best compliment out there tonight. No, we did not. No question about it. Well, let's take a look and see what's going on with the area scoreboard as Gary Martin has given us some eyebrow-raising matchups here. Folsom taking care of business on the road. 28 nothing over Del Oro in the third. Grant. Early in the ballgame, second quarter, a touchdown lead over Pleasant Grove. Oak Ridge and Rockland slugging it out. Fourth quarter action, 20-13, to 13, Oak Ridge. Antelope, I guess, is giving an indication to Larry Cunha and the Roseville Tigers that uh, sometimes things might not go all that well on a week-to-week -week basis. 42-7 over Roseville. 15-14, a one-point lead, Pondo over Franklin, but early in the second. Davis upsetting Elk Grove earlier this season, now on top, slightly leading Monterey Trail by three in the fourth quarter, 24-21. And the ever-improving Vista Del Lago Eagles pounding Casa Roble, 49-2. And... Over in Fair Oaks, fourth quarter, anybody's game. Casumnus Oaks, 28, Del Campo, 21. Well, yeah, at, at, over in Elk Grove, that, at Casumnus Oaks, uh, I don't know how much time is left in that ball game, but that uh, Del Campo behind seven, a huge game for both those teams. It certainly is, and that, that CVC conference along with the uh, daunting Delta and that Sierra Foothill League, three of the – most powerful leagues in the entire section, slugging it out week by week. Well, that's the way it shakes out this evening in Natomas, where on homecoming night here for the host Intercom Tigers, they put it all together in a mid-season 
showdown. And with a 41-0 victory over visiting River City, Indercom takes over sole possession of first place in the Tri-County Conference. Well, Access Sacramento and the Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast crew wish to extend their deep appreciation to the Intercom High School administration, particularly Athletic Director Matt Hinton, for their cooperation and assistance with the broadcast arrangements for this television sports production. The Hometown Sports Game of the Week is a special sports presentation of Access Sacramento in association with play-by-play -play sports productions. For the Imperator, Jim Domino, Rick Stewart, our executive statistician, Gary Martin, game director, Nick Dunn, and the entire Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast crew, I'm Will James. We thank you for joining us tonight and look forward to the next occasion when we can hook up again. So long, everyone. from Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week is available for purchase on DVD. For more information, call Access Sacramento, 916-456-8600, extension zero. This has been a Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast from Access Sacramento. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week, and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda.